And this lesson will create helpers that will be confined to our curve so that as that curve deforms, the helpers will always follow that shape. So the purpose of these helpers are going to be to drive the bones that will be connected to this, this curve so that as the curve deforms, the chain will follow, giving us that nice flexibility we're looking for. To get started here, let's say we head over to our crate panel and we'll create our point helper. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn on center marker and the size, I'll set that to three so it's not so large. And we can go ahead and come out of the tool. So how can we confine this helper to this curve so that as that curve deforms in its shape, the helper will, will always follow that shape. Well, we could use the path constraint for that. Okay, so here we're using Max's Tools Creative Loop. So I'm just going to go ahead with the helper selected, choose Path Constraint, and constrain that to our curve. Now, of course, we want to remove our keys. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the Start, or the End key first, and then the Start key, so we can keep that helper at that initial spot. Okay, from here we're going to want to clone five more from these. We can hold down shift and we'll just drag this up just slightly in the z-axis. And again we're making five more here so we'll put in a value of five and choose OK. Now to evenly space each of these helpers it's just a matter of using simple math. We know that with the path constraint we go from zero to one hundred percent at the end of our curve. So knowing that, again, we just use simple math. We know that the start helper is at a value of 0, so the next one would, of course, need to be at 20, and then 40, 60, 80, and then finally 100%. So starting with the end, we can head over to our path parameters, find the percentage along path parameter, and go ahead and put in a value of 100%. And of course, the next one, it's going to be 80%. The next will be 60. And then 40. And then finally 20. Okay, great. From here, what we can do is go ahead and rename each of these helpers. So starting with the, the first that we made, simply label this PT path for point helper path underscore SPA01 for spine A. We'll use a similar naming convention for our bones, except instead of PT, we'll simply use BN. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this and use that to rename the others. So that's going to be B and then C. And the next will be D. and E, and the last is F. Okay, so we have them renamed, we have them constrained to our curve, we can go ahead and recolor them, which we definitely want to get into the habit of doing, especially when working on more complicated rigs, so you can quickly access, again, these, these objects. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose a, a color of orange, a shade of orange. All right, great. So if we were to go to this curve, if we were to go to the Modify panel, go to its point sub-object, select one of these points, start to move it around, notice our path constraint helpers are going to follow. Great. And this doesn't even give you an idea of the type of result we're going to get. Okay, it's going to be much better than what we have here. Uh, but I just wanted to show you how that all works. Okay, so that finishes this lesson. In the next lesson, we're ready to create the bones for our spine rig.